Hey guys, today we're going to learn about some properties of equality and use them to write algebraic proofs. And we're also going to learn about property, uh, properties of um, congruence. So, so, the newest thing we're going to learn about today are called proofs. Um, I mean, you know what proving something is, so we're going to create arguments uh, and we'll outline what proofs look like. So, to know what a proof is, a proof is an argument that uses logic, definitions, properties, and previously proven statements to show that a conclusion is true. So if you notice what kind of reasoning we're using, if we're using definitions and properties, uh, we are using deductive reasoning. An important part of writing a proof is giving justifications to show that every step is valid. So we'll go through some examples of this, but really we're just saying how did you know to do that step uh, in the problem. So to do that, we need to come up with some properties um, or definitions that we can use. We've learned some along the way, but we're going to remind ourselves of some of the ones we've learned uh, throughout our math careers, you could say. Um, we use these all the time, but we don't really talk about what, they're, uh, what the name of them are. So I'm going to give you a copy with all of these properties on it. But, um, as you are solving, these are some of your choices for your reasoning. Anytime we add something to both sides of an equation, we're using the addition property of equality. Anytime we subtract something from both sides, we're using subtraction property. Anytime we multiply both sides of an equation by something, we're using multiplication property. Uh, when we divide by something, we're using division. Uh, this little extra piece just reminds you you can't divide by zero. Uh, reflexive property, I always think of if I'm looking in a mirror. It's similar to when you look in a mirror, kind of like this guy, when he's looking in the mirror, he sees himself. So with the reflexive property, something is equal to itself. Symmetric property, uh, when we've done lines of symmetry in the past, that means it flips something over. So this smiley face that was looking inward or to the right, is flipped over like a line of symmetry, and now he's looking left. So line of symmetry, or symmet symmetric property, says A, B, okay, then B is equal to A. So if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A because it's symmetric property. We can use that property to flip an equation over. Now the transitive property, I know you've heard of before, but it has to be like a train. So when we say a train, Notice it's like we have a connector. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, connect that train and say that A is equal to C. So that's our transitive property. Look for a connector so I can say that the first is equal to the last. Now substitution property, we've substituted a number in for X numerous times, but there is a property that says we can do that and that's the substitution. So if A is equal to B, then B can be substituted anywhere for A in an expression. There is one more, um, the distributive property. You guys know this, if I distribute the A inside a set of parentheses, um, I multiply it by both pieces, that's using the distributive property. So now, we're going to do our first algebraic proof. We're going to use an equation, and we're going to solve, and then we're going to justify each step that we did. So, if I have the equation 4m minus 8 equals a negative 12, that's the equation I'm going to start with, and you always start with what you're given. So, how did I know this? It was given to me. That's its justification. So, if I was thinking how am I going to solve, what would I do to, to um, this side of the equation to get rid of m? Well, I do whatever is added or subtracted, so I want this negative 8 to go away. So, I'm going to add 8 to both sides, using the addition property. So, next I'm going to simplify, so the negative 8 plus 8 goes away, and I get 4m. Negative 12 plus 8 gives us negative 4, and what we did there was simplified what we did with our addition. Now if I think, what do I want to do to the 4m to get m by itself? Well, right now it says 4 times m, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide using the division property of equality to divide both sides by 4. We're going to simplify again, so our 4's cross out, and 4 divided by 4 gives us 1. A negative divided by a positive gives us a negative. 
So, um, it's just like we've done before solving an equation, but now we're going to justify each step that we're doing. Okay, we're going to try another one. This same equation, I'm going to always start with the given. So I write the equation that I'm starting with, how I knew it. It's given. Now, if I want this one-half to go away, technically we would divide by one-half, but we can't divide by a fraction, so I multiply by its reciprocal. So I flip this over. That means I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 using the multiplication property. So 2 times a half cancels out, and I have t, and then I multiply the other side by 2. So now I'm going to simplify so that I get t by itself, and 2 times negative 7 gives us negative 14. So how we got that step, we simplified. So with each step, you're not going to tell me what you're going to do next. You're going to tell me what you did to get there. Alrighty. Um, like in algebra, geometry also uses numbers, variables, and operations. For example, segment addition and angle measures are numbers. Segment, segment lengths and angle measures um, are numbers. So like a segment is 5 inches. That's a number. It's length. So you can use these same properties of equality to write algebraic proofs in um, geometry. So, a couple things to remember. With our segment bars, we've talked about this before, or with our segments, if I write it without a bar on top, so just AB, it's representing the length of segment AB. So AB is almost like a variable representing a number, the length of that segment. So let's go back, if you remember, we used to do um, segment addition property, where we said a part plus a part equals a whole. Uh, we're going to try to solve for x using those properties. So uh, segment addition property is what told us a whole is equal to a part plus a part. So now, since each of these are standing for measures, we would take their measures and plug them in for um, each quote unquote variable. So in the picture, if NO is 4x minus 4, I'm going to take that measure and I'm going to plug it in. So notice plugging something in has to do with the substitution property. So I'm going to use substitution. I'm going to plug NM's measure, 2x, in for NM, and 3x minus 9 in for MO. Now, um, if I'm going to solve for x, I see that I have like terms right here. So sometimes we'd call that combining like terms. You can also call it simplifying. So the first step, I would combine like terms. Now, if I have x's on both sides, I want to take the um, smaller of the x's and I'm going to subtract it from both sides. So using subtraction property, I subtracted 4x and I subtracted 4x. So if you do that without writing minus 4x minus 4x, you skip the um, simplifying step because you did it all together, which is totally fine. So now my x is on the right. To get x by itself, I'm going to add 9 to both sides. And we using addition property, we get that x is equal to 5. All right, let's try one with angles. Uh, we are still doing angle addition property. Um, an addition property, notice we have a part a part and it tells us ABC the whole is 8x so the whole is equal to the part plus the part with addition or the angle addition property um, before you plug in the measures you're gonna wanna start by naming the angles themselves so angle addition postulate says ABC is equal to the measure of ABD plus DBC so start with listing out the angles with the angle addition postulate and then, to put our numbers in, remember we're going to substitute each of those angles measures into the equation. And now we're back to our angle properties, um, or our addition property, you know, subtraction property, our properties of equality. So, on this side, we've got two terms with x's, and we've got two terms with numbers. So we're going to combine like terms, or we're going to simplify. You can write either one. My dog's barking. Now I see that I have x's on both sides. Um, instead of subtracting the smaller, you can, you'd get a 0 on this side. This time I'm going to subtract um, the 9x from both sides. So the, how I did that, I used subtraction property. And x is not by itself because it's got a negative. So to get a negative to go away, we could either divide by a negative or we could multiply. 
So either way, you'd either put multiplication property of equality or division property. So remember, each step, we're explaining what we did to get to this step. All right. Um, in chapter one, we learned that segments with equal measures are congruent and that angles with equal measures are congruent. So our reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties of equality, we also have those same properties when we're talking about congruence. So we call these congruence properties, uh, but they're the exact same. But notice instead of the equal sign, we're going to use the congruent sign. And when we talk about segments, we put the bar back on. And when we talk about angles, we take the M off and we just have the, the um, angle symbol. So remember, um, oops, <clears throat> remember um, when we talk about numbers or actual measures, we talk about equal. When we talk about the figures themselves, we use congruent. So we're going to do some of this practice in class, but real quick so you can practice as well. Uh, let's see if we can practice identifying the property that is being shown um, in each statement. So if I said QRS is congruent to QRS, and we want to know, well, what property am I using? Well, I need to notice that the left side is the exact same on the right side. So if this angle were looking at itself in the mirror, it would see itself. So that one is the reflexive property of, notice that's a congruent symbol, so we're going to say reflexive property of congruence. Now, if we said angle 1, the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, so measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 1, well, we took that equation and we flipped it over, just like if I was using a line of symmetry, whatever went second, now goes first, whatever went first, now goes second, and we're using equal signs, so that's the symmetric property of equality. Okay, um, now the next one, it says AB is congruent to CD and CD is congruent to EF. Well, I have two equations and I see that they have a connector, angle CD. And then they said that means that the first, AB, connect those, is congruent to the last, EF. So train, we have a connector, and we're using congruent symbols. So that's transitive property of congruence. Now, I, once again, we have something equal to itself. To say that something's equal to itself, we call that the reflexive property, and it's got an equal sign. So we're going to use reflexive property of equality. Um, like I said, we're going to spend some time practicing these in class together, uh, but it is important that we know these properties. So if you want to watch uh, this again or just read through those properties again, like I said, I will give you um, a sheet. It will be gold, so you remember to keep our... Uh, equality properties and our congruence properties. So I'll see you soon.